and keyboard settings are incredibly important to make sure we have set correctly within Warzone 2. And so today I'm going to be taking you guys through the best keyboard and mouse settings for Warzone 2 to ensure we are not being held back. But before we jump into it, today's video is kindly sponsored by Opera GX. And to be honest, even if they weren't sponsoring the video, I'd still want to tell you about this web browser because it is categorically the best one you can use right now. You see, we all love to play FPSs on our gaming PCs and achieve that buttery smooth performance in FPS. But to make sure we never hinder that performance, we need an internet browser that's built for gamers to help us inside and outside of game. One of the biggest features of the Opera GX browser is GX Control, which enables you to enhance the performance of your PC when gaming with your browsers open. Perfect for when you want to keep a bunch of tabs open and not lose them, but you don't want to hurt your performance in games. GX Control enables the user to limit the amount of CPU or RAM being used by the browser. And it also comes with a network limiter, so you can limit the network bandwidth used by Opera GX to gain performance in games and streams. All it takes is a quick look at your task manager to see that Opera GX uses way less resource with GX Control than Google Chrome. That, oh my god, friendly fire. <sighs> Flashbang incoming. I mean, I can't be the only person who hates light mode on literally every website. Lucky for us, with Opera GX, we can force dark mode on every page that you browse, so you can forget about that flashy white color and just enjoy a nice, smooth experience. What's also truly awesome is the seamless Discord and Twitch integration. You can stay connected with your team, log into your Discord account, and communicate with your squad during your games, and you never have to miss your favorite streamer going live either, because just by logging into your Twitch account from the sidebar enables you to receive notifications notifications when a streamer you follow goes live. And lastly, who knew a homepage could be so awesome? The GX Corner homepage allows you to stay up to date with free games, the best deals, the newest releases, and breaking gaming news all in one easy, accessible place. You can easily switch between platforms and see upcoming games, as well as gain easy access to all of your gaming store pages. Honestly, if you're still using any other browser right now, get rid of it, download Opera GX using my link in the description, and completely level up your internet browsing experience as a gamer on PC. We're gonna start off today with the very important step of checking our Windows mouse settings before we jump in game. So come down to your search bar, type in mouse, and then go to mouse settings, then simply go to additional mouse options, and you can close down the large window there, and you'll be presented with the mouse properties area. Head on over to the pointer options tab and make sure that pointer speed is set halfway between slow and fast, directly in the middle. This is what many people will call 6 slash 11 mouse speed, or 6 out of 11, uh, because it's the sixth dash on the scale. And what this is doing is it's ensuring that from Windows perspective and how it feeds into our games, we are getting 100% mouse accuracy. We are just getting our 100% mouse speed. In order to change our mouse speed, we're going to be playing around with DPI as well as mouse sensitivity. You don't want to be changing in here, so just make sure it's 6 out of 11. Then you want to make sure that enhance pointer precision is disabled. If you were to have this enabled, it would enable mouse acceleration. If you guys don't know what mouse acceleration is, it makes it so that the faster you move your mouse, so the velocity of your mouse across your mouse pad, determines actually how far you travel. So if I move from point A to point B very quickly, and then I move from point A to point B slowly, then the first instance will actually lead me to turn further in game. And this will completely throw off all sense of muscle memory. You'll never really know how far you need to move your hand on your mouse mat to potentially aim at enemies. So this is just a big no-no. Make sure you've got it off. Next, we're going to take a look at our gaming mouse software. For me, that is Razer Synapse because I've got a Razer Death Adder V3 Pro wireless mouse. Uh, you just need to make sure that you go into whatever you've got. It might be Logitech G Hub if you've got a G Pro wireless or something like that. So starting off with DPI or dots per inch, which is basically your global mouse sensitivity. If you were to double this global sensitivity and then halve your in-game sensitivity in Warzone 2, you would have the exact same feeling sensitivity because you've doubled one and you've halved the other. That's essentially how it works. I'd highly recommend that you stick with a DPI of something around 800 inside your mouse software. We can then play around with sensitivity inside a game to get a sensitivity that we actually like in Warzone 2. But having 800 DPI is a reliable DPI that's not going to lead to any uh, potential mouse skipping that you can get from from some of these really high DPIs, uh, 800 is just very reliable, so I'd stick around there. And then taking a look at polling rate, this is the frequency that our mouse actually sends data updates to the PC, so that the PC knows where your mouse is on your mouse mat and therefore where you're aiming in game. The simple rule of thumb here is the higher the better, because the more updates we can send to the PC, the more accurate our mouse movement is going to feel. So I'd highly recommend for most people to just set this to the maximum you can set it to, which for a lot of us is going to be a thousand hertz. Now, if you are on a lower end system, it has been noted that high polling rates 
can cause some lag in games. It's usually very minimal, but if you are someone who is struggling with FPS and performance, try bringing this down to 500 and see if that helps with performance a little bit. You can usually actually see slight FPS dips when you start moving your mouse around because it's sending so many signals to the PC. Just food for thought, but for most people, a thousand is the best. Now let's look in game. So we're in the keyboard and mouse settings area, starting off with mouse, obviously aiming input devices locked to mouse because we're not using a controller. Mouse sensitivity, I'm not gonna tell you a mouse sensitivity to use because it is completely personal preference to everyone. I use 800 DPI, 4.69 mouse sensitivity. I do have a good method of finding a sensitivity that should work to, for you. It basically involves testing uh, maximum and minimum ranges. If you want me to show you that in a separate video, I can do. But in general, just pick something, stick with it, and gain that muscle memory. There is not a best sensitivity, no matter what pro player tries to tell you that. You can then click show more to gain access to a bunch of multipliers to your sensitivity that will apply to things like vehicles, air vehicles, third person. You know, if you're driving around in a car in Warzone 2 and you just want to be able to rotate a bit quicker because you don't need, you know, muscle memory aim, you just need to quickly scan the area, then you could come in here and you could set this to 1.5 or something like that. Me personally, I don't see the need to do that. My sensitivity just feels comfortable overall, but I just wanted to show you guys where those settings are. The ADS sensitivity multiplier will affect how our sensitivity feels when we aim down sights. I'm going to cover this in just a second when we talk about our ADS sensitivity type. But for now, click show more and make sure the ADS sensitivity transition timing is set to instant. This means that as soon as you right click on your mouse and you start zooming in, you will have the change in sensitivity, assuming that there is a change based on the other settings we do here. Otherwise, if you set it to something like gradual or after zoom, it can make that zoom in kind of feel very weird on the mouse and you completely lose track of your aim. And if you're tracking an enemy, they completely lose you. It's not a fun experience. So make sure you've got it set to instant. You've then got the ADS sensitivity multiplier for when you're focusing. So when you're holding your breath with a sniper or something like that, personally, I'd recommend you just leave this at one, which means that it's going to be one to one with your normal ADS sensitivity. But once again, something you can change if you have the personal preference to do so. Moving on to ADS sensitivity type, this is probably the most misunderstood but important setting along with monitor distant coefficient because it affects how our aim feels going from hip fire, you know, just running around the map and looking around to how it feels when we're aiming down our sights. Let me explain. Another way that we can define our sensitivity inside of the game is how far do you need to move your mouse across your mouse mat to do a full 360 degree turn. So if I put my mouse down here and I move it left to right, how long does it take for me to get to the tree again? This is what we call centimeters per 360. The first setting for ADS sensitivity type is legacy NW. If you set this and then make sure that our ADS sensitivity multiplier is set to one, then in theory, we should get a one to one centimeters per 360 when we're not zoomed in as when we are zoomed in. So once again, if I now zoom in with my red dot and I do a spin, I find that I have to move my mouse the same distance across the mouse mat to do a 360 degree turn. This combo of settings is a really good starting point for many, many players because it's gonna give you that muscle memory in terms of thinking how far do I need to rotate my operator uh, to be aiming at a certain position uh, where an enemy might be. Now, Legacy BO or Black Ops, I would recommend that you stay away from. It doesn't lead to a one-to-one -one feeling sensitivity whatsoever. It seems very arbitrary, even when we've got the ADS sensitivity multiplier set to one. It's very hard to set this in any accurate way that's gonna help us, so I just avoid using it. And then lastly, we have the relative setting, which you can read over here says, like Legacy, but your rotation speed is adjusted to travel a specific monitor distance with the same mouse movement no matter your zoom level. This distance can be adjusted with the monitor distant coefficient setting. What does all that mean? I'm gonna use this scenario to explain it. So if I ADS here, you see that my FOV shrinks a little bit, okay? Then what I'll do is I'll aim over here so that this target is right on the edge of my screen. Then if I were to un-ADS, that target moves a bit closer towards the center because the FOV's got bigger. So as I zoom in and out, the distance on my monitor from the center of the screen to the target keeps changing. What the monitor distant coefficient is gonna determine is what distance from the center towards the edge of my monitor are we trying to match our sensitivity between being zoomed out as well as being ADS'd. 
If you want to match for the full distance of your monitor from the center to the outside, like in this scenario where we've got from the tree to the target, then we need to do a little bit of maths. And the maths is quite simple. What you're gonna do is take the aspect ratio of your monitor. For me, it is 16 by nine. So that's gonna be for anyone who's running a 1080p or a 1440p or a 4K monitor, basically anything apart from ultra wide. You're gonna take the bigger number and you're gonna divide it by the smaller number. So 16 divided by nine, what you get is a value of 1.78. What this is doing is matching our ADS and un-ADS sensitivities from the middle to the outside area of our monitors. Setting it up like this will allow you to get very accurate flicks every time when an enemy is towards the edge of your monitor. So I can very easily, using muscle memory, figure out how far I need to move my mouse now, and it feels very consistent. However, flicking isn't everything. A lot of the time, what you're trying to do instead is track, where an enemy is basically localized around the center of your screen and you're tracking them while either you're straight or they're moving across your screen, you know, at distance, so moving quite slowly. In that scenario, we don't want to match our sensitivity to the edge of our monitor, but we want to match it basically right at the center. To do that, you set your monitor distance coefficient to zero. That's as low as it will go. This will feel like you have a really low sensitivity when you ADS, but you'll find that your precision while tracking and your crosshair placement while ADSing will feel incredibly accurate. I'd recommend you try all those out, but if you want a compromise between flicking and tracking, then you can set this to what the game actually sets as the default value, 1.33. Now I know that mathematically that might not seem halfway between zero and 1.78, but in terms of monitor distance coefficient, it is. And it will give you, as I said, sort of a compromise between the two. Your tracking won't be perfect feeling, uh, neither will your flicks, but they'll both feel pretty good. You've just got to understand what is your play style. Are you a flashy player who's running around, you know, flicking a lot? doing this kind of thing? Or are you more of a player who posts up and does a lot of tracking? That's gonna determine where you set your monitor distance coefficient. Or as I mentioned at the start, you could set this to legacy MW and just get a one-to-one -one centimeters per 360, uh, which can help with muscle memory as well. It's personal preference. There are all the options. Go and try them all out. Moving on very swiftly, the custom sensitivity per zoom, it can be useful uh, with high zoom sniper scopes, but I wouldn't recommend it at all for anything lower. Uh, it can just slow it down a little bit so you can get really precision aim. It's not something I personally use, but it's there if you want to use it. Vertical aim axis can be inverted if you want to. Once again, not something that I'd recommend you use. Third person ADS correction type. I don't play third person, so I just leave this at default. And then mouse calibration, by default, all of this should be off. Just make sure none of it is turned on ever. Acceleration, filtering, smoothing, mouse wheel delay. I don't even know why these kinds of settings are in here. Maybe at some point we'll have to make a video turning these all on, but these will make your aim feel terrible. Moving on to gameplay, crouch behavior. I'd recommend you leave this at toggle. It will give you the most control over whether you're crouched or standing up. Same thing with prone. Toggle is far better than hold. You never want a situation where you have to keep a button held down to be in a certain position. You want to just be able to go prone, remain there until until you need to stand up and keep moving. That's gonna be your best settings. Sprint slash tactical sprint behavior. I'd say this is more personal preference. Some people do prefer it to be that when you release the sprint button, you stop sprinting. Me personally, I like to be able to just click it once and then just forget about it and just continue sprinting uh, as long as I need to. Automatic sprint. I used to recommend that you put this to automatic tack sprint so you could tack sprint really quickly and get that cracked out movement. Really in this game, there's no point because there really isn't cracked out movement to start off with. And also you get a lot more control out of being able to just move around with your gun at your hip like this. Uh, there's a lot more slow played out situations in Warzone 2. However, what I would recommend you change is tactical sprint behavior from double tap, which is by default, where you have to double tap shift in order to engage the tack sprint, and instead just put it to single tap run. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us with our automatic tack sprint off to still walk around the map as we need to, but then with a single click of our shift key, we instantly go into tactical sprint. It's really handy because it means that when the tactical sprint runs out and we can reset it, it's very quick to get back into our tactical sprint and get around the map as quick as possible. I don't find many situations where I'd prefer uh, to just be doing our normal run rather than our tactical sprint. So I think that this gives us the best of both worlds, you know, allows us to hit fire when we need to, but allows us to engage sprint quickly as well. 
closed backpack on sprint, just leave this on. It means that if you start getting shot while you're in your backpack menu, you can just quickly put it away and get moving so you don't instantly die. Automatic airborne mantle, just leave this at partial. That seems to work the best for me. Share slide and dive inputs as well as invert slide and dive behavior. I've got it set up where I share those inputs and then I invert it so that just by tapping the button, I can engage my dive mechanic like so. So I can just tap because diving is far more important than sliding in Warzone 2. Uh, but if I do need to slide still, I can still do it. I just have to hold the button down like so. Uh, I find that this is the best setup for it because I get access to my dive when I need to and I can still slide when I need to and it's all contained within one button rather than having to reach for different buttons on my keyboard. In the movement advanced settings, there isn't much I would recommend you change apart from grounded mantle. By default, this is set to on and it's meant to be a quality of life thing for players where if you have something which you can mantle over and we move up to it and we hold W and then we press space, we'll instantly mantle over it. But what about a situation where we want to push ourselves right up against it and we actually just want to jump and peek over it? Well, if I'm back here, I can do it. But if I'm right up next to it, it automatically mantles me and it might end up in me actually losing a fight where I'd rather have just jumped. By turning off grounded mantle, what it does is it now will require two jump inputs in order to mantle, whereas one jump input will just mean we'll jump. So if I move up to this and I'm jumping, I can now get a good aim over this, you know? I might spot an enemy and then go, ah, oh, I'm gonna make the decision now to jump out this way. Or maybe I look over and there's no enemy there. Now I can just double tap space and I get that full control over the mantle behavior. Aim down sight behavior, definitely leave this to hold. Anyone who uses toggle aim is honestly a weirdo and I wouldn't recommend you do it. Change zoom shared input is gonna determine which button you press to change zoom with different scopes. I just leave it as my sprint key. That's what it's set to by default, but you can change it here if you would like to. Equipment behavior, definitely leave it set to hold. If you set it to toggle, then you have to press the button to pull the grenade out and then press it again to throw it. That's probably gonna end up in you holding a grenade in your hand and blowing up, so definitely don't do that. Uh, interact behavior, leave it at press. This is gonna mean that you don't have to hold down a button to interact with things, which is really good. Weapon mount activation, you can set this to all sorts of stuff, but I'd recommend leaving it at weapon mount toggle. This is gonna mean that you can just press a single button for weapon mount. For me, it's one of my mouse buttons so that I don't have to take my hands off of anywhere on my keyboard that is important. And I can quickly mount up without even being ads like so. You know, I can be down here and I can just press the mount button. Instantly I'm mounted and I'm ready to take out some enemies. Armor plate behavior. By default, this is set to apply one. I still recommend that you set this to apply all. I can't actually show you in here because this is multiplayer. And I can't show you putting on plates, but the idea that you would have to press a ton of times to put on all those plates whilst moving around is not good, especially now that we can sprint while plating. You can press a single button, have those plates going, and then be sprinting away from enemies and ready to then turn around and outplay them straight away afterwards. In combat advanced settings, there's nothing that I would recommend you change. There was a slightly viral video that went around on TikTok and probably YouTube Shorts and Twitter and everything that said changing manual fire behavior to hold made it so that all of your uh, manual fire guns like pistols and single shot DMRs would just shoot automatically and it'll be really really good but uh, in, in actual testing it's not that good you see I've turned it on now and if I hold down my shoot button yes it does shoot out shots without me having to click loads but it's considerably slower than if I just pull the trigger really quickly so it's not really that useful in which case I would just recommend you leave that at where is it again? I'd recommend you just leave it at press. And then honestly, everything else in this section, I would just leave it default. It really doesn't have any effect on our movement or our aim. And lastly, in terms of keybinds, I'm not gonna run you through all of my keybinds because it's all personal preference. My main overall ethos on keybinds is try to get as many things localized to, you know, around each hand. Don't have things on the right side of the keyboard that you need to be reaching across to try and hit. Utilize your mouse buttons. For me, I've got one of my mouse buttons on the side as my melee and one of them as my mount, as I showed you earlier. Just make good use of the area around and find something that works for you. If you want some good ideas, go and watch some pro players and what they use as their keybinds. You might find some stuff that works for you. So that is all of the keyboard and mouse settings covered. Next up, I'd recommend that you go and watch this video if you haven't already, where I cover through all of the best graphic settings for the current season of Warzone heading into season three.